Hello, I'm Charles Reed Anderson, founder of CRA and Associates, an IoT and smart cities advisory firm based in Singapore. I wear a few other hats as well. I'm the host of the Tech Burst Asia podcast. I'm a senior advisor for McKinsey on IoT and smart cities, and I sit on the advisory board of the Global Organization of Smart Cities. And today, we're going to talk about China, and more specifically, why I think there's two markets for IoT. There's China, and then there's the rest of the world. But first, let's take a step back. I mean, hardly a day goes by where you're not going to see something in your newsfeed about the U.S. and China trade war. And a lot of people are getting concerned that China's catching up. My concern isn't China's catching up. My concern is that China's going to leave us behind. And why would I say that? You have to look at what is going on in China today. They've already committed to being net carbon neutral by 2060. They're the world's leader in energy production from renewable sources. It's home to 95% of the world's electric buses. The smart city initiatives at totaling 500 plus are leading in the world and some of the best AI solutions out there. There's more unicorns popping up than I can count. But the problem you're probably asking yourself is, what does all of this have to do with IoT? And I'm going to try and explain that to you, but by looking at the IoT forecast on where markets are going. Um, but it's a little bit different to go directly into China. So what I'm going to do first is take a look at the wider market. Now, it's actually relatively easy to get these numbers because there is a lot of firms that forecast IoT and low power WAN connection forecasts for the future. Um, the bad news is there's not a lot of consistency across them. So to compare the different low-power WAN technologies and forecasts, sometimes you need to pull data in from different sources. So I've done the work for you. I've tried my best to make sense of it. Let's see what I found out. To start out, we should look at where we are today. And the good news is it's pretty easy to get actual data. And conveniently, Ericsson releases a mobility report twice a year that gives you some good numbers to use as a baseline. And what they reported is that at the end of 2020, there was 150 million massive IoT connections in the world. Now, massive IoT, of course, is MBIoT and LTEM. They also said there was 151 million other IoT connections out there from low-power WANs. So I know that Sigcox, for instance, had 16 million at the end of the year, which leaves us with 135 million. For simplicity's sake, we'll just call that Laura. Now you start looking forward, and they're forecasting out now until 2026. And they are forecasting explosive growth for massive IoT, going from 150 million today to 2.666 billion connections by 2026. That's 87% of the entire low power WAN IoT connections market. And that means there's only about 380 or so million connections left for the other LP WAN providers. And if I use that same rationale I did to break down Sigfox and Laura before, that means that Laura would only be at 341 million and then 40 for Sigfox. So it's not a bright future if you believe this forecast. Challenge is I like comparing these to other forecasts as well. So what I decided to do was take the numbers from IoT Analytics. And what I like about what they're doing for their forecast is they're looking at the market share that each of the different low power WAN vendors or technologies will actually have. So if I apply those market shares against that same 3.047 billion total market, I think we can find out something interesting. And what you find out is they say that massive IoT is going to explode. It's going to grow tenfold, but that means only into 1.4 billion connections or roughly 47% of the market. They're also forecasting a nearly tenfold increase for LoRa up to 1.25 billion connections, meaning 41% of the market. They also think that Sigfox is going to do much better than you would get under the Ericsson report, and then some other vendors and technologies will wrap up the final market share there. So this gets a little bit confusing because which of these numbers should you be using? And the quick answer is, I don't know. Um, I guess it really depends on what you want to do. If you're bullish on MBIoT, I'd use the numbers from Ericsson. If you're bullish on LoRa, I'd use analytics. And this is a problem. These top line numbers, there's no consistency and you can sell whatever story you like. So it's important that we take a step back from here and look at the next level down. And I like understanding where are driving these connections. So I can do that as well through the Ericsson report conveniently. They've done all the work for me. And in 2020, what I found out is 64% of all cellular IoT connections are in North Asia. And Ericsson defines North Asia as China, Japan, Korea, and Taiwan. But 
let's face it, it's really China. And this is the number I want to know, but they don't break it down for me. Um, we know those other countries are having good growth, but it just pales in comparison because of the size and scale of China and its 1.3 billion plus population. But it's also going to be growing more. They're forecasting that same North Asia region is going to be 69% of all cellular IoT connections by 2026. So this is good because I can now figure out where the market's actually growing from, but now I don't know more specifically about China. So I had to find another source. And what I found out is, conveniently, this that is actually out there. In 2015, it was easy to go back and find out which operators were releasing which connection numbers. And what we found back then is 26% of all cellular IoT connections were already in China back in 2015. And you can see that Vodafone and AT&T were doing well as well, and the rest was split across the rest of the world. Now you fast forward that to 2018, and you see that China's share has grown up to 46%. Now that's significant. That's nearly half of all cellular IoT connections in 2018 were with the big three Chinese operators. And you can start seeing that Vodafone and AT&T are still significant, but the rest of the world is starting to shrink a bit. Now, fast forward to 2020, where we just finished out, and this is where you're going to be shocked. Three quarters, 75% of all cellular IoT connections in the world sit on the big three operators in China, China Mobile, China Unicom, and China Telecom. You can start seeing now that Vodafone and AT&T share looks a little bit less significant, and the rest of the world also looks less significant. So this is the challenge. This is why I say China is just a different and unique market. Its scale and speed of its growth is fascinating to watch. But what we really need to understand is why did it experience this growth and why is it so unique? And what I find interesting about China is they've basically created the perfect storm. You've got the government that lines up their five-year plan, which outlines the technologies they want to back and what solutions they see being deployed which means you bring the supply and demand sides of the ecosystem on board. The technology vendors know which solutions they should be building because they know the demand side is going to be buying it. And it's not only that. All these things are produced locally, which means they're produced at the local Chinese price point, which means people can actually afford it. So what you've got is the entire ecosystem working in one direction. Now, just imagine if we had that in the rest of the world. Well, we can imagine it. It's not going to happen. But that's why it's so fascinating, and we should be studying China closely to see how this plays out. The other thing you have to consider is they're about to decommission 2G, which means hundreds of millions of connections are going to roll across now to their massive IoT networks as well. And what I like about the China market is people think, well, eventually they're going to hit their peak. The big cities and the big vendors are really adopting uh, technology, but this opportunity has a long tail on it because basically the leading ones are acquiring the leading technologies now, but they're going to be doing this for the next decade as solutions go into the lower tier vendors or the tier two, three, and four cities. So it's an exciting one to watch, and we should be learning from it, but we have to realize that we can't replicate it. Um, It's a unique situation, but it's a great learning opportunity. So what are my recommendations? As much as possible, what I would say is ignore all these top-line market forecasts. They're meant to generate headlines, and they're not going to be accurate anyway, if that's what one thing that history has taught us. So focus on the underlying trends, though. I broke it down by region today. What you really need to do is break it down by use case. Look into China and see which use cases are driving adoption. Number two, we need to get over this us-versus-them mentality in the low-power WAN industry. There's far too many arguments on LinkedIn and social media saying, my low-power WAN is better than yours. Um, There are reasons why each low-power WAN technology might be the best one for a specific use case and scenario. And we need to get over that and realize that all of them can succeed. It should be based on user requirements, yet we're just pushing, saying, mine's better, you should only use mine. If we work together and actually understand if we move the market forward, we all win, we'll be in much better shape. So please stop all the infighting, and then I won't have to ban anybody else on LinkedIn. Next, don't ignore the mobile operators. And I think this one might raise a few eyebrows. And what I've been advising some mobile operators recently on is that they should incorporate LoRa into their solution portfolio. And I'm running up against a brick wall initially because they say, well, we have invested in LTEM and narrowband IoT. And I'm like, yes, but this is complementary because specific use cases, in particular when they're focused on a specific site um, or user requirements or they need an encrypted LoRa WAN, why would you not offer it? Why try to push them to something that doesn't meet their requirements? And it's relatively easy because most operators have professional services firms which can easily deploy a LoRa solution. 
So don't be surprised if you start seeing a lot more operators carrying LoRa as complementary to their massive IoT portfolio. And the final thing now, we should come back to China and wrap up with this, is don't ignore what's going on in China. You should be watching it very closely. And if anything else, you should be copying it. And I do love the irony of saying that. For years, I've heard the Western vendors complain that Chinese vendors only grew because they copied our technologies and solutions. Well, if you do think that's true, here's your perfect opportunity to get your revenge. Why don't you go out there, find out which use cases and which technologies and which devices are actually driving their market and copy them for yourself.